Ballin' boys, yo, we got that No good, chillin' in the cut Hard rock pack And if you hatin' on them canes Better stack It's the state of the M.I.A. The U is back What them haters gotta say Them hurricanes We be ballin' all day Turn over chain Got the people goin' crazy Now whoop, whoop It's the sign So you know who it is They countin' find it's all Like the U up in here Gold teeth, grillin', chillin' Solo D, what it is We got the turn up chain Gang, gang up in here Cause it's a U.M. thing Orange and green is the gear. We coming to you HD, so it's crispy clear. Now put them U's in the sky. Don't stand and chill and let them know if they don't know we got some canes up in here. You, you, get some canes over here. You, you, get some canes over here. You, you, get some canes over here. Throwing U's up, how we do our thing over here. You, you, get some canes over here. You, you, get some canes over here. You, you, get some canes over here. Throwing U's up. How we do our thing over here? Canes, we be ballin' all day. 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 school to the pros this guy knows the game so you better not be half stepping i can guarantee you most of the audience is gonna agree with me before they agree with you strap in because coach hayes is about to crack your cream and fertilize your brain go ahead and right here right now subscribe now and check out coach hayes football.com c a n E S Canes. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. Hey, man, I'm trying to tell you, listen, it's a big one today, y'all. If y'all don't know what's going on, this is a big time game today. If you don't have no clue, I'm not going to be able to point. We got less than an hour for kickoff, so I'm going to jump straight on into it. I got my usual suspect, well, part one. You know, my dog, he be on set. I'm going to get into that for a second. Y'all was taking my lady, man. But anyway, let me just jump on straight into this thing right now, man. Hit my boy up, V12. What's up? Talk to him. He's riding right now. What's up? Oh, we can't hear you, man. We got to kick you off, dog. I don't know what it, what's going on with the sound, man. No, you gone. So anyway, let me check this out right now. I'm going to bring my boy uh, Balin in the scene. 
Balin, talk to us, man. What you got going on? What's going on, guys? Another Saturday, uh, Saturday event for a Hurricanes game. I love it. ESPN um, for the fifth time this year. Um, I'm excited to see what we do against Virginia Tech, who arguably is the second biggest game of the season other than Clemson. A lot of uh, people have written us off for this game for whatever the reason, and even in preseason and even currently as the number nine team in the country, uh, Virginia Tech does come in as the favorite. And I, I love our chances. Every time we're an underdog, we always pull through. Uh, so I, if, if I want it that way, um, I bet you a lot of Canes fans do too. So we'll see what goes on. But today's probably, in my opinion, the biggest game of the season. If we take care of business today, which I think we should, uh, we should be coasting to a potential ACC berth. Exactly. And, and I'm going to say this right quick before we do get started, man. Hey, got to hit up my man, Solo D. Like I said, great intro, great music. I like the way it warming the show up, get us fired up, get us going. You know what I'm saying? So I, go check him out on Miami Sports Music YouTube channel. He do stuff for the Hurricanes, the Dolphins, and the Heat. Man, young brother doing big things, man. Also, if you are watching this right now on Facebook, do me a favor. Start a watch party. Let's get this thing going. If you're in one of those Miami groups, Go ahead and share that thing out, man. Get it going. If you're on YouTube, share that link out to everybody as well. Uh, let's get this thing going, man. Go hit up, you know, the, the family group chat. Grandma, get on the cane gang. You know what I mean? Because we here to, to talk about these boys. Uh, we're going to get V12 on in a second. I know he, he got some technical difficulties, but we're going to make it happen. Also, let me know real quick in the th in the comment section, man, if you got any uh, audio issues, if everything does sound good. But other than that, man, real quick, we're going to jump on into this. We talk about VTech. All right. And I'm looking at it right here. I think this is the closest line I've ever seen. One. One point. They're saying that pretty much is an even game, right? Yeah. Somebody has to win it, right? They're never going to give you zero. So they, I think it was at one and a half earlier, and I was down to one. Uh, I did see in the comment section, D-Nice, what's going on with you? Hey, and I checked out your boy Wholesome, man. We got something coming for you guys. Uh, he said we get wrecked by COVID today, so I, that's something I haven't heard. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that bailing about. Yeah, the COVID so they just story. announced even right now on College Game Day, eleven people are out for the Miami Hurricanes today. Um, so that that's kind of playing in fact, uh, playing from last week in the NC State game. Now they did say that a lot of the players do not have COVID, but because they've been in contact with it with other outside sources or even like in classroom settings or wherever. Whatever have you, uh, they are out for at least two weeks as part of the ACC ruling, so um, they can't even travel. So, which was interesting to see Trevor Lawrence travel last week to Notre Dame. That was a weird. They saw him, you know, on the sideline and whatever. But um, but Hold yeah, on. So, with, with his mask down, trying yeah. to get the quarterback. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Right, no. it's, it's all about money, man. Right. So eleven people are out, but we do have the return of Brevin Jordan. This is his first game back, so I'm very excited to see him back in action. I know again, Will Mallory has stepped in hit in that role pretty well. I think both guys are NFL ready, so um, it'll be interesting to see how they both play today and how they they um, they obviously rotate them. Uh, being that Brevin has been taking a lot off, uh, we'll see how how up to speed he is from whatever. I think it was an injury that he that he suffered, but. Um, I'm excited about him coming back. But, yeah, 11 people are out for COVID today. That's tough, right? I mean, basically, that's one side of the ball. If you and really want to think uh, about a lot it. of it coming from the offensive line group. So there's not a lot of depth there today. Yeah, man. I that's mean, scary. and we already had what? Your, your boy John Campbell was already out, I think, due to injury. We had a backup. Now, I mean, that's huge right there. So guess Which what? Is number why one? Vegas isn't stupid by, by putting us as an underdog because they know we are hurting in, in key areas that we're not even strong in. So. And VTech is always a game that's always going to be tight. It's always going to be a fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's always that that type of deal when it comes to that robbery, if that's what you want to call it. Now, let me see if I can bring I do, the one thing that I do see an upside for the Hurricanes today, the fact that we even came in preseason as the underdog is because it is in Blacksburg. And we do have a tough time playing in Blacksburg, but there is no fans. So that actually, in my opinion, hurts Hokies, uh, which we saw last week against Liberty at home, right? So there's just no momentum there. I, I just, you know, I think that that played a big part in this game. And the fact that there's no fans, it's literally almost considered a neutral site other than the fact that there'll be a big VT in the middle of the field, which I think <laughs> is a favor to uh, Miami. Yeah, it does help out because it is rough playing, especially at night, especially yeah. at night. You know what I mean? So, like I said, I, I mean – I don't know if home field advantage actually plays a big part in these games anymore, right. Right. you know, except the travel, maybe the travel a little wear and tear, depending on how far you have to go get on the plane. But 
I mean, these guys are used to it at this point, you know. You, you know, you get on the plane, get off the plane, blah, blah, blah. But other than that, so far as crowd involvement, I don't think that's too big of a deal. Now, the stadiums do play, you know, uh, uh, simulated noise in the stadiums. And it's not overwhelming, I have to be very honest with you, because right. I've, been, I've been at a game, and not, not a hurricane game, but I've been at a college game, and they played the simulated noise. And I still can – I can hear the quarterback as clear as they call in the cadence. So – I think the simulated noise is more for the TV audience more than it is exactly, for, for yes. the fans. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just so they, it doesn't look like you're watching a high school scrimmage. All yeah. right. So with all that being said, man, like I said, we're gonna jump into this thing. I do want to talk about some things. We're trying to get my boy V12 on. He was in he was moving in action, but I do want to make a comparison. You know, I ran across these things and um and I thought these were, these things are interesting to look at. Uh, you know, we always talk about numbers and we can kind of skew those things, but um, I think VTech is going to hit us with a heavy dose of the run game, and we know yep. that we've had a very tough issue with stopping the run, especially on the perimeter. Um, and so, with all that being said, you know, let me just spit out a, a, a uh, I'm sorry, yeah, let me spit out just a, a little thing here. VTech is ranked 100th in passing, we're ranked 35th, but they are ranked number fourth in rushing, and we are ranked number 60th. Mm -hmm. so that's that is the, the wild thing for me so you're looking at you're looking at a team that is ranked number fourth in rushing and we're ranked number 61st on our defense and stopping the rush we better stop the run today baby that's because i don't think they're gonna change their game plan and they're gonna give us a heavy dose of it and we're gonna we better be able to to to, to lock it down and see what's going on when it comes to that man I just think that's going to be huge right there, and we need to definitely make sure that we do that. How do you feel about that so far as the run game? That's the scariest part. I mean, what, we, what do we talk about week in and week out with our defense? We give up too many yards on the ground, and that's Virginia Tech's strength. They, they're they not really showing much in the past game. They Their running back is amazing. He actually had a, suffered an injury last week. I don't know if he's playing today because he didn't play the rest of the game uh, against Liberty, and he suffered in the first quarter. I think it was a hamstring injury, uh, the transfer from Kansas. Um and then obviously their quarterback Hooker, he's he's a de he's definitely a dual threat quarterback. He likes to run the ball, I think, more than he does passing, and he's actually efficient passing too. I think he's completing sixty percent of his passes. So um, this is going to be an interesting like dynamic as far as our defense, because I feel like our weakness is the run game defense, run game defense, and that's mm -hmm. what their strength is. So I expect a lot of a lot of points to be scored today. Um, you know, Coach, as we mentioned that last week, uh, Coach Diaz put a lot of uh, pressure on LB McLeod and said, we're going to let him loose. Well, guess what? They're running right at you today, my boy. So you, hopefully your one tackle games can, can go up to at least two. We need two of them today. So um, <laughs> so we, we need you to be effective in some way. But, um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. If we can dominate this game, uh, I think this is going to show us a lot of who we are uh, going moving forward because this is a really good test to really showcase if our defense has gotten better or is it's literally gotten worse. So, uh, well, 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 I'm going to interrupt you because I have a, a comment here that said, Angelo says my cloud is oh. out and I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. That's a great uh, thing. That, that's too tough, man. When you have one tackle a game, I mean, anybody can step up and, and hopefully do just as good, if not better. Yeah, he just, we just found that, man. D-Nice, what's up, baby? All right, man, we're going to bring V12 in. Let's see what he's talking about. V12, talk to us. You can hear me, V? That boy frozen like like he uh bro, let it go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, man. I don't know you what kind of thing. He's frozen. Boy, he's gotta go. He's gotta he's go. He's gotta go. Hey, that boy, that boy got a smoke signal phone, man. Got a cricket wireless. All right, so here we go, man. I don't know what, what's up with him. He back on, he's shaking his head. Turn your phone sideways, V12. That's probably the problem. Man, this man here got a, a kryptonite roof on his car. Well, we're going to have to let him go, man. So anyway, real quick, let's let's check it out. Um, so we talked about that, man. Uh, let, let's talk about this piece, Balin. What is it that, from an offensive perspective, we kind of talk about this pregame, postgame, and so forth. What is it that offen offensively we have to do? Because I still don't think, um, and I always talk about uh, uh, getting an identity, right, when it comes to the Hurricanes. Yep. I guess I'm asking you a question, but I'm going to start first, I guess. the What I see is we are here, 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 here every week. We haven't consistently done anything. And a pattern comes after something is done twice, right? 
And so the problem is we had a good run game. We throw the ball well. Receivers weren't catching the ball. Then last week, receivers catching the ball, unbelievably great, right? Awesome, right? Run game, eh, non-existent, decent, yeah, whatever. However you want to term that, okay? Not here to beat them in the head. What is it that you think the offense needs to do in order to, and again, we're now what, game eight? This is the eighth game? Am I correct? Six and one. So Yeah, so yeah. this is the seventh game. So this is the seventh game right now. What, eight, eight, you're right. Six and one, eight. seven to the eight, yeah. Yeah, so this is the eighth game right now. By the eighth game, we still haven't solidified an identity to this team, right? My question is, I guess, what do we have to do to, or what do we do to, today to win? Um, I, I, I say it every week and I think you say it every week. Everybody says it's established the run game. Um, but I, from what I saw last week, I feel like our identity is unfortunately a one player game and it's Derek King. I mean, we, we keep, we put the ball in his hands and we pretty much say whatever, however you perform is how we're going to look. So last week he was almost sensational. I mean, he, he probably played the best game as a Miami hurricanes quarterback in the history of being a hurricane. I mean, if you look at all the stats, he literally almost played perfect and we barely won the game by three points. So, I mean, what more can you ask? I think we still, I think we rely heavily on the pass game today. Virginia tech is the worst defense in the ACC, which is very hard to, to, to say because they've always usually been the best. So to say that, you know, they've given up almost 38 points a game, 37 points a game. I mean, that's, unheard of for a Virginia Tech team. So I think we just keep riding high on De'Ara King and establish the pass game. But I, I want to see the run game, but I just don't, for whatever reason, with our offensive line, they're definitely going away from that. So I think just put less pressure on the O-line by making De'Ara pass more. And our receivers are finally, I think Mike Harley um, is is putting himself in a position to now be even looked in the NFL. So, I mean, if you keep playing games like that, that I mean, that's what we expected, right? So it's, it's, it's sad to to put so much pressure on these guys. But at the end of the day, like you say every week, you're at the University of Miami. Like your your speed, you're you're faster than every guy you're probably going to see car- guarding you. So just all you got to do is make the catch and, and go. So I think, you know, seeing Mike Harley perform, I think, again, the other receivers have to step up. Wiggins cannot keep looking at his gloves every time he drops a ball. You know, Pope has to start getting more into the game. Um, yeah. I just, again, there's, we have so many weapons. You got to use it, but I think Derek King is, is the answer today again. And unfortunately that's what we're writing on. We're going to win based on how he performs. I agree with you, man. And, and, and like I said, my biggest deal is, you know, I still feel that we got to get the ball in these speedsters hands faster, right? Yeah. Uh, we can't rely on the 50, 50 ball, which we, they did a great job. And I'm going to tell you this, and I don't want to sound like a hater, but I'm a realist. Mike Harley had a heck of a game last week. But one game doesn't make you. Right. My question is, you have to do this consistently, right? Mm-hmm. And and my thing is, will he do that consistently? We don't know because this is, in game seven of last week, was his breakout game, I guess, of this season. So now he has to now do this consistently uh, in order to get that thing rolling. You know what I'm saying? Real yeah. quick, man. Phil Agar, what's up, coach? Hey, man, big win last night for y'all boys at West Orange. They had a, a they defeated. Who did they play? Yeah, uh, they play, uh, they beat um, Coey for the second straight time in two games of the Coey. They've won 31 0 and 38 0. Uh, awesome. I'm sure Coey wants to forget West Orange and where they're at. Great job, man. They got a new coach over there, man. And some they got some guys over there playing, but then he messed the whole thing up with this right here. I got oh, VT by six. Get that, cat out, get that cat out of here, man. You know what? Your whole Florida. Matter of fact, I'm calling the DMV, getting your dog. Hey, I'm right now. Felipe Franks goes into the swamp and beats him with no head coach. They're six in a all time when they're against the spread. I'm telling you right now, Arkansas with the upset. I'm loving it, man. He put a laugh out loud. Guess what? I'm calling 911 right now. Hey, a dude, <laughs> named, a dude named Phil Agar just stole my car. Look him up. All right? He, hey, he got his hat man, on. We got to talk about the Gators on a cane show. We got to stop that, man. Who? Phil? Phil Agar, He's a yeah. Gator fan? You guys talking about the Gators right now. Let's 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 move on. Let- yeah, we gone. One time, man. One of my students, Johnny Kelly, JK. What's up, baby? All right, man. So look, the run game might show up today. Let me see here. We see we should have another good game. Now I'm gonna bring this up about the run game as I'm looking at this. Um, what's odd to me is Virginia Tech is fourth in rushing, but their defense is 104th. Yeah. That's crazy. You would think, you know, when you practice against guys, you get better at run fit, so forth yeah, and so terrible. on. 
You know what I'm saying? But they're 104th. The thing is, but they're 94th in passing too. So, yeah, I mean. They are the worst team in the ACC in defense. Like the worst. They said it today yeah. on game day. And yet Miami's still not favored. But then when you talk about the offensive line, I mean, we – let's look at our run. D, or like you said, we're 60th, right? So, we don't – we're nothing impressive. Right. So, like I said, those are the type of things we're looking at. Let me ask you this, man. Um, I'm going a, I'm to a bring this up to kind of bring it back. Um, Notre Dame, Clemson. Great game, right? Great game. I thought it was an excellent game. It was a nail biter. I mean, if you're just a fan of football, you would have enjoyed that game. Fan though, man. Right, and that's what I wanted to bring up. So now, with the loss to Clemson, or Clemson losing rather, and Notre Dame, you, know, you explain to to myself and the people out there what happens now so far as the Hurricanes' future. Yeah, so in order to make the ACC championship, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have to win out, and Clemson has to lose one more game, which they're not going to. If you look at their schedule, they got cupcakes all around. I mean, they potentially could lose a game to, I think, Virginia Tech, um, but, I mean, that's probably not going to happen. And then you have Notre Dame, who has to lose two games because they're undefeated in ACC play. The whole thing was if, if Miami and uh, Notre Dame would have had one losses between the two, they would have had to go through a tiebreaker, which Miami has a harder strength of schedule than Notre Dame, which would have put Miami into the conversation of, of getting that spot. But because Notre Dame beat Clemson, they now have to lose two ACC games, which I think they got like Wake Forest, not going to happen. You know, Boston College, which could be a potential upset today. And then I think they also do. I don't know if they're I think they do have Virginia Tech, too, as well. I'm not sure on that. But, um, but they have to lose two. So in order for Miami to go to the ACC championship, first of all, they have to win out. So we got to take care of business today. But Clemson does have to lose one more upset loss or Notre Dame has to lose two of the last three games in ACC play. So it's a long road for us. We are definitely rooting for Clemson, which is weird to say, uh, to beat <laughs> Notre Dame. What a great win for that program. But it would be a dang shame to say Notre Dame has an opportunity to win the ACC championship in their first year in the ACC, and Miami has never won an ACC championship. So that's kind of disgusting to even talk about. But, uh, you know, that's where the cards fell, and, and great job to Notre Dame taking care of business, which I didn't even see happening, especially when they only they almost lost to Louisville at home, which was wild. So That's crazy, man. So I did want to just bring that up because I didn't want to forget about it as we – kind of run it down on time. Now, let's flip this thing to the defensive side of it, right? So we talked about offense, you know. Uh we talked about basically it's on it's on D Derek King's back. Uh these victories for now on. Other people have to step up. Um wait a minute, before I do that, somebody did put an interesting point. Cam is going to have 100 yards this game. Behind what offensive line? All right. So Cam will have 100 yards this game and two touchdowns. Um, here's my thing, right? And like you said, you have some COVID deals. You got some injuries going on there. Even when we had our start and we weren't dominating, I've always said that. When I saw the Miami Hurricanes play, and I'm not a yesteryear guy, I'm just talking about football even up today, right? Dude, you have grass stains on their back. I've said that a thousand times. We're not aggressive. We're, we're very passive. We're very position blocking when it comes, you know, all the zone blocking and all that pretty stuff. And you know, sometimes, man, you need three yards in a cloud of uh, rubber pellets because it ain't dust anymore. Everybody playing on turf. So three yards in a cloud of rubber pellets, man, is what I'm looking for if we can make that happen. But I don't know. We have to do something to get creative in the run game. You can't win a game. You can't bank on this one young man to do it all because even though he may be the, the catalyst of the offense to make this thing go, you can't bank on this, this young man because football just doesn't work that way. Right. Tom Brady doesn't win if he doesn't have a running game and a James White and all those guys. Right. It just doesn't happen. You have to have you're a talking about, you're talking about just putting the whole offense on DR King's back. Yeah. OK. I'm just saying yeah, you, you have to you have to give him some reprieve in some kind of way. You can't just every all 70 plays can't go through DR King if you plan on being successful. You know, 70 play offensive game. You can't put all those plays just strictly on that man with his feet or his arm. That you have to give them some you have so therefore you have to be creative in some form of fashion. Um, and, and that's just how I see it, man. Coach Hayes, um, interesting yes, sir. That. you ready for this? Go the over it. under in this game is 68.5. I know that I'm looking means at there it. is going to be a lot of touchdowns today. A lot of touchdowns, I and that's what so. that's what they're saying. But the thing is, they're saying it was 65, but they're saying that it's gonna be a one-point game. That means 
<laughs> so what is it going to be, 35, 34? That's it. 37, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Someone's so, going for two and don't get it. Yeah, we're gonna get our we're gonna get our predictions in here in a second. But now let's go ahead and get to this uh um uh defensive side of it. All right. So defensively, man, um what do you say from a defensive standpoint again? Gosh, I feel like every week that I I say something on the defense, they do completely opposite. I mean, last week I praised them so heavily off uh, off just destroying them the previous week, and then all of a sudden they they put up probably the worst defensive performance last week against a backup quarterback yet again. So, I mean, it's 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 so hard to read this team. I, I and you talk about offensive identity. Who are we as a defense? I mean, again, the last decade we're top ten every single year in the country, and now it's like we're not even in the conversation to be. You know, we were a little bit. I guess there were there were some talks, but I mean, just seeing the overall the and the level of components our opponents. That's what I always refer to. Yeah, we look good at some games, but who do we play? We're supposed to shut out teams like NC State or Pittsburgh with a backup quarterback or UAB with a, a backup quarterback. Like we're supposed to put teams away that that aren't supposed to be on the field, but yet we aren't, and we're giving them yeah. ball games, like good games that are like down to the wire. We're texting back and forth, like what's going on, and yeah, we pull through, which I think I read an article, like they say Miami hasn't been playing up to their potential, but yet they find ways to win. Well, I hate, I, I, I like that, but I also hate it. Like, like we shouldn't be finding ways to win. We should be dominating like the Florida State game, right? Like the Louisville game, like where we show sparks of, wow, we have, we are the better team here. So it's just, uh, you know, our identity on defense is, is so inconsistent. And I, I, I mean, today's really going to show us if we can really stop the run game, I'm going to be excited about that because it's going to lead on to bigger games and hopefully even a big bowl game uh, down the road. But right now, you know, with the 11 people out, I just don't see, I, I see the the over under pretty close. Yeah. I, I You know, it's funny, man, that you say that because we talked about identity, right? And the thing is we don't have an identity, I feel, we don't have an identity offensively. We haven't solidified. We don't have one defensively as mm-hmm. well either. Are right. we a run stopper? Probably not. Are we a pass stopper? Not really. Are we a blitzing team? Are we a tough team? Man. Are we a turnover? We never really broke it down like that. Uh, yeah. Are, really are, we a, are we a defensive creating – I'm a defensive – a turnover creating defense uh, or takeaway creating defense? And that's the issue. You know, I, I'm going to just say this because I had – in my. You know, after this, this we end this live, it goes back up. And a lot of times people see it later, right? Mm-hmm. And I read the comments. I try to go through all the comments, man. And you got a lot of people saying, you guys are too tough. You guys, this, that, and the other. Just let, just be happy that you guys, the kids are playing and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other, right? And I'm going to just simply say this. You made a valid point. When people say they find a way to win, right, I get it. You find a way to win against the Clemsons. You find a way to win against the better teams. Yes. But but with the amount of talent that we have, and see, this is the big thing about it. The amount of talent that we have and the transfers that have come in, we should not, right, mm-hmm. should not be struggling with the pits. We should not be struggling. I don't even care. I'm going to go back all the way back to UAB. Yep. We should. I still consider that a struggle, yep. right? Mm-hmm. We, with the amount of talent. Now, I've always said this. Are we who we think we are? Right. That's another thing, okay? Are we who we think we are? Uh, uh, just because we have talent on paper, does that translate to the field? That's another thing. So, and, and I don't, I, I really don't know, man. And I'm just waiting for the, I'm waiting for, we saw it last week offensively. Yeah, but like I said, we have in order to create a pattern it has to happen more than twice, right? Yeah. So I'm waiting for I'm waiting for this to happen, and we're running out of games here. That's the deal, right? We're running out of games to show that pattern. And defensively, we big one day on this, we down one day on this, we up, we down, and that's my biggest concern. So my, my I guess my my response to those comments in the in the in the in the comment section after the game, yeah, I'm I'm all for the guys winning. Yeah, I am happy that we're winning. And I'm not thinking yesteryear. I'm thinking this year with the amount of talent. We're not rebuilding this program right now. I don't really think we're rebuilding this program. There's some pieces missing, but a rebuild means like you playing them, but straight freshmen. And we don't have a bunch of freshmen on this field. Correct me if I'm wrong, Baylor. We have a bunch of freshmen? No, we don't. No. 
The only we don't have a, a gang of freshmen playing like you see some other teams. The only, the only position that we're really using freshmen is the running back position. Running back with with yeah. Knighton and Cheney. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. And so the receiving core are not freshmen. The tight ends right. are not freshmen. The old linemen are not. Maybe now D-line, no injured. linebacker, no secondary, no, no, right. And so with the six and seven team of last year, you should have a gang of experience. Yeah, you understand. So I say all that to say. Let me see here. Um, If we Angelo weren't says it's a hey, different it's, it's a way. different team every single game. Shake my head. Uh-huh. Yes, Go ahead. That's an accurate statement. But here, here, here's the thing. If we're not just finding ways to win, we're not an underdog today. So that tells you exactly what what it is. If we don't just find ways to win, there's no reason why we're not a 10.5 spread right now versus Virginia Tech in our way, in our favor. But mm-hmm. no, people don't respect us. Yeah, granted, we have 11 people missing. Well, dang, Virginia Tech had 19 missing the first game against NC State. They put them away. So, I mean, there's no excuses. We have talent from from, from the first team to the third team on all positions. We need to showcase that and, and dominate. I think a lot of that has to do with coaching, right? We always talk about Miami, but I feel like a lot of it is coaching. I mean, come on, this Virginia Tech team lost to Wake Forest. Come on, guys. A lot of people didn't know who Liberty was until last week. They probably all thought they were still Division Two. Like, Come right. on, guys. This is this is we're not playing games here. We're 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 here. Look, right, right here. Come there on. you go. Yeah, and, and 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 again, man, that that's exactly what I'm saying, right? So this team puts away a North Carolina State, but we're in a shootout. And they missed 19 players. It was the first game, right? And they missed 19 players. And so that's my thing is that I think it's the inconsistency is what worries me, right? Yeah. I, I'm gonna give you an old statement, man. I saw. I'm going to flip this to basketball a little bit. So some of my older heads, if you know who Bobby Knight is, Bobby Knight was the chair-throwing coach on basketball for Indiana Hoosiers and blah, 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 choking out players and all that, right? Don't condone Texas that. Tech too, right? He finished there, right? Texas Tech? I think so. But here's yeah. what I'm going to say he said that was very important, very profound statement. He said, I would rather have a player that gives me eight points a night. I may be wrong on the number. But eight points a night every game, and a dude that gives me 30, next game he gives me 15, next game he gives me two, next game he gives me this. And the reason he said that is because it's so inconsistent. I know right now going into a game at tip-off, I'm up by eight points because I know that kid's going to give me eight points. Mm. And I thought that was huge because you know what you have, right? And, And, yeah, you would love to have that guy. He dropped 30, but then the next night he drops four. Or he fouls out. He's just so inconsistent that you don't know what you're going to get. And as a coach, that can drive you crazy, right? You got a kid with a with a gang of potential, right? Two X gloves. Last week, he caught the game-winning throw. I mean, game-winning catch. This week, he drops a wide-open pass. Now, the next week, what do you do? Do I throw it to him? Do I flip the coin and say, all right, hope he catches it, hope he doesn't. My career's on the line. You, you see what I'm saying? So inconsistency breeds a lot of doubt, man. All right. So I just want to simply say that uh, when it comes to that, man, uh, real Here quick. Is, we know historically, and I said it two weeks ago, and I think I'm. it, it keeps proving my point. Miami always plays to the level of competition. And for whatever reason, however that looks, whether we're the underdog and we beat Notre Dame by 40 or we play in NC State, we're up, we're, we're spread by 10 and we barely win by three and a comeback win. So, we play to our level of competition each and every week. There, it's so funny. If you look at our schedule before the season, we talked about this in the preseason show and even on other broadcasts when you hear other an, an, analysts. The two mm-hmm. games they circled on our, our schedule this year, Clemson and Virginia Tech, right? Well, for what we've seen on, on film and what we've seen other than not, not seeing today, the two games they circled on their calendar were Louisville and Florida State, because those are the only two games they actually played a complete game in, and those, and honestly, looking at it in hindsight, those those teams aren't aren't even close to being as good as advertised. So it's like we we got to show something today that we wanted to be in these types of games and dominate, and not just squeak by or barely get by. Because if we play like we did against NC State, not min- minus offensively, uh, defensively, uh, we lose this game by by I think ten. Right now, now let me ask you. First of all, I want to say those some excellent sound effects with the. I don't know how you. 
<laughs> but you need to be in a voiceover actor, man. But anyway, let me say this piece right quick, man. How does basically knowing your future, right? If you were a betting man, if you were a player on this team, you already know your future is, right? You already know what you, you already know what it is, right? You we talked about the uh the 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 layout when it comes to ACC, Notre Dame, Clemson, what has to happen, if this happens, that happens. And I have to be honest with you, if I'm a Vegas man, it's kind of far-fetched for us to get in, right? Well, actually, I just saw the schedule for Notre Dame. It just popped up because they're talking about ACC on college game day right now, and they uh, have Boston College today, which could be an upset, and North Carolina next week and finish off with Syracuse. So these next two weeks, if if somehow they get upset, it, you know, I like that. I think UNC can beat Notre Dame. I just don't know about Boston College, but that's always a big rivalry game, and it's at BC. So we'll see. Right. Well, we'll we'll find out. But let's just say, how I want to find out. What do you think the mind of a player is? Right. When you know your fate is already determined, in essence, really, and you say to yourself, "Oh well, what happens? Do I start playing for self to try and get into the league, mm. or do I still play for team?" to try and finish this thing out, right? Where am I starting to be, I kind of get out of out of the scheme of things, you know, just to to up my draft stock, stock or do I still stay within the game plan? Uh, what what do you think happens here? And, and who do you think controls that? I think there's a little bit of both. Um, I think, you know, there's still the pride of, you know, hopefully we have some players on the team that actually – are thankful that they actually play at the University of Miami, right? So um, they're the pride of winning and losing, especially this is why I love this game because we are the underdog. And I'm sure that coaches have seen it. I'm sure that people are watching ESPN right now in the locker room, like, and they're saying Miami is favored to lose this game. So it's, I think the mentality of that, it just brings an extra boost into today's game. But I think overall in the entire scheme of things, you know, after today, after these games like, like Notre Dame and stuff, like I feel like next week will be that type of mentality where like we know we're not really playing for anything anymore, so let's just kind of worry about self instead of team. And that's that's a big problem you would have in a locker room. Um, but at the end of the day, I think today there's still motivation to, to, to win uh, and still compete for an ACC berth. But uh, I think next week that, that question would, is going to be a very hot topic are we are we going to finish the season on a high note or are we just playing for self and stats and doing things outside of the game plan so that we can either shine or think we're in a position to be successful to move on to the next level? Right. And and, and again, that's the tough thing. Right. So you t- we talked about culture. So part two of that question was who's in control of that? I'll answer and I'll let you go ahead back and finish. Yeah. Um, again, that's a cultural thing. Right. When we talk about football culture. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a cultural deal in the sense of. You have to get them going because I'm going to tell you right now, Manny Diaz, coach to coach. If you happen to lose this game, you've lost your team. I can tell you that right now. Whoa. If you lose this game today, you lost your team. So you, when I'm saying the season. Yeah. Because they're going to they, – they, they, they don't have – one thing about these young men today, they're 30 seconds, right, the microwave generation. I want it right now. And when they see there's no right now, now they turn to me, 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 me. Everybody's singing, me, 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 right? That's just the, 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 see, we can't talk about, we can't live in yesteryear sometimes and then we want to live in today's world. Today's world, these kids are not saying it's about the you that's on my helmet or on my logo, on my chest. It's about me. If you peel that back, it's an M-E standing right up under there. And and unfortunately, that's just the way society has, has created these guys now. So I'm just saying, Coach the coat. I mean, you're, you. you are so accurate. I mean, if you look at our history, we don't close seasons off well because we realize that it's over, right? We're mm-hmm. one. It's like what, weird. This is two things that happen. When we find out we're not playing for an ACC championship, we start losing. Once we win the sixth win for a bowl game, we start losing. It's like a weird trickle down effect, and we never really close a season on a high note. Think about when we were number two in the country, right? We had an opportunity. We already solidified ACC berth and everything. What do we lose? We lose three straight games, right? Number two in the country, by the way. After beating Notre Dame by 40, we lose to Pittsburgh. I mean, embarrassing. Right. Then you look at last year. You know, we, we started we started off, what, four and one, five, five and one, or five and two, and all of a sudden, we lose FIU. Boom. We, or actually, no, we win the uh, the next game to go bowl eligible against Pittsburgh, and then we, what, we lose four straight games, even the bowl game that we shouldn't even 
that team should have even been on the field. We it yeah. was a slap in our face, and we still lost by zero, 14 to zero. So we don't historically finish seasons the right was way. It tech? That was right. LaTeX, right? Yeah, it was LaTeX, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we don't necessarily like you to your point, which I think you hit on the money. If you, everybody wants to talk about yesteryear and all, look, let's look at the past. No, yeah, let's look at it. And every year, once we figure out we're not playing for something or we've already achieved, you know, a bowl eligible status, which we did last week. Now at six games, uh, we start tanking. So I think, like you said, if we lose this game, and I, and you know, if it's competitive, it's one thing. But if we get if we get beat by ten or more. I watch what I say, and, and you probably hit it. I think we lose the rest of the year against teams that we shouldn't – you know what I mean? Like we have UNC still coming up, right? That's a big game to them. And then, you know, we I don't know who we have next week. Uh, Virgi- uh, I don't know who we have next Georgia week. Tech. Georgia, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, right. So watch what I say, man. We This could be a scary trickle-on effect if we don't get it together and make a statement today. Gotcha. Real quick, man, I didn't forget about this, but I did want to just kind of get some points out because what I've noticed is – Sometimes when I open the phone line, they call in. It, I don't want to say interrupts, but it does break the conversation some. So I'm going to open them up now. If people would like to call in, you're more than welcome to call in. We got about 15 minutes to game time, so I'm going to leave them open for the next 10 minutes. Please call in with your comments, questions, concerns, your love, your hate. It don't matter to me. Let's just make it happen, man. So real quick while we're waiting on that, if some people decide to call in, that would be great. So. Hopefully, V12 listening here, call in so he can get his prediction in because my man right here struggling with his. Hey, we got to upgrade his Wi Fi, y'all. I need some donations to upgrade my, do- my dog Wi Fi, man. We need a dollar 99 donation to upgrade him from that cricket to that Boost Mobile. Okay. Hey, I think Walmart got a sale going on right now, too. But anyway, uh, real quick, man. So, so like I said, we talk about that. That's huge. Um, I see some bringing. <laughs> okay, we got a call coming in. Let's see. Her. Let's see if it comes in. Uh oh, hold on. Maybe it went out. Not sure what's going on, but anyhow, um, there's one part of the game that I feel like we need to win today, and we've won pretty much every single week, and that's special teams. I think uh, this is going to be a, a big factor today. I feel like you know Borgas right. has got to make all his field goals. I think that we're going to be in position to be in scoring a lot tonight, so or today. Um, so I feel like, and then obviously the punt game where our, both of our offenses can move the ball. I feel like uh, the field position game has got to be in our favor today. If we have any shot of, of putting this game away. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think that is going to come down. I mean, you th- you talk about a one point. And that's what Virginia Tech come- is known for, right? I mean, they're known for their special teams. So I feel like yeah. today we got to win that battle. Yeah. Call, I hear you calling in, but it's hanging right up as soon as you call in. So go ahead, try it again. We'll definitely get you on. But uh, anyway, so like I said, man, we're we going to get this down. we under nine minutes. Um, anything in particular we wanna, that, that you want to discuss that we haven't really covered right now so far? We talked about the COVID. We talked about uh, the future of this bracket that potentially can happen. Uh, we kind of talked about offense, defense, anything in particular that we need to see. We got how many guys, 11 guys out right now? That's huge. Yeah. And, and That's half, huge. half of them, like six or five of them are offense alignment. That's huge. Let me see it right here. Jeremiah, what's going on? Yeah, Baker, game to game. All right. Well, what does that say? We could talk about the linebacking crew. I mean, the fact – I didn't even know LB McLeod was one of the 11. So that's – that's obviously, again, he doesn't really play a big factor, but he is still a, an impact player because of his – Hold on, caller. Give me a second as soon as they call in. Do I'm what? sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. I better go for it. Like, I, I was just saying, like, LB McLeod is really not a non-factor, but he's still an impact player because of how he's performed like in his in his career at Miami. So it'll be interesting to see who replaces him at the linebacker position and how effective they are if they are – if Virginia Tech is indeed a heavily run team. I got you. Well, we got a caller calling in right now. Do me a favor real quick. Cut your background down. Caller, talk to us. Give us your name. Where you calling from? What's going on? It this JK? What's up with you, man? Hey, this is one of my little soldiers around here, man. JK, man, I'm glad you called in. I know you ain't gonna be talking about nothing, but we're gonna talk about it Monday. And I might give you an F, my man. All right, baby. Hey, I love you, man. Soldier Pride. All right, buddy. Yeah, man, one of my little students, man. He been hey, wanting hey, to call in. On that phone call, none of us heard anything. It was just you. 
Oh, that's terrible. I wish I could have heard it, man. Well, I'm going to cut it down. I don't know what's going on, man. I'm a football coach. I love it. That was my man. That was one of my little students, JK, man. He called in. He wanted to call in for the long. You're like, coach, I'm going to call in this week. So he called in, man. But big shout out to him, man. All right. So anyway, I'm done with the callers. We're going to get it especially fixed. We're going to jump on this thing immediately after the game. All right. It's going to be myself and Baylor. All right. We're going to open up the phone line. I want you guys to vent on the positivity because I know it's going to be good. I know we're going to make it happen. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We're going to jump on immediately after the game, after the Hurricanes put Hurricane Foot and Chicken behind, if you understand. I don't even know what a Hokey is. If you could tell me what a Hokey is, what is it, a little turkey or something? A little turkey, man. We finna eat something because it's, pre, it's a pregame meal for Thanksgiving right here. You know what I mean? What, a Cornish hen? Is that what a Hokey is, a Cornish hen? I don't know. It's terrible. It's terrible. All right. So, like I said, man, we're going to go ahead and jump into this thing, man. If anybody got any uh, last-second comments, Phil, I'm not even going to put your stuff up there, man, because you're a hater. And I know you ain't talking Knowles all day the way we whooped y'all, man. Wow. We, hey, we didn't even beat, we, hey, we didn't even beat you like you stole something. We beat you Are they? like you thought about stealing something, and we whipped your behind before you even did it. Let me yeah, see how here. Many, how many Knowles fans wish that we lost to NC State last week? We'll see what they do against them this week. I heard that, man. Let me see. Angelo, I think our younger LBs are going to step up with the speed we have lacking. I agree, man. Uh, and you guys correct me. What's the young man's name? Number six, I think he is. Oh, I love that kid, man. Yeah, he, he, he's he got some twitch in him, man. He can really go. This is a funny question. Ready? Does Kari yeah. get ejected after the, at, at this game? <laughs> I don't know. He skipped out last week. He skipped out. He skipped he's out. Different one. He's different one. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something funny. I was looking at it. I think Vegas has a line on him getting kicked out or not. Wow. I mean, I think Four out of six, seven games. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Listen, Vegas puts a line on anything. Do you know that? I didn't know this, that talking about Brett Favre. Do you know they put a line on every time? You know, after every play, he unbuckles his chin strap. Really? Yeah, they have a line yeah. when, when he was playing. They had a line that he buckles his chin strap. After every – it could be a run. He gets the call. He unbuckles his chin strap, buckles it back up. Unbuckles it, throw a ball, buckles his chin strap, buckles it back up, man. That's funny, man. All right, real quick, D-Nice, the key to today's game is to make uh, Virginia Tech pass the ball, make sure that QB doesn't break runs. Well, let me ask you a quick question about that. Uh, and I thought about that, too. That's a very big statement, D-Nice. My question is how? How do we right. force them to pass the ball when we're playing a lot of soft zone? Our blitzes are not necessarily making it home because we haven't sacked anybody, I don't think, in two weeks. Well, we did. I'm sorry. But we haven't made a, a significant – Real pressure. I, maybe that's maybe that's what I want to say. Not sack, but I'm talking about some just some crazy. Like had a quarterback under crazy duress. You understand what I'm saying? Like just straight stressed out back there. You know. Uh, so I how do we do that? Terrible last week. Say again. Our, our secondary looked terrible last week. I don't. I don't like anybody passing on us, especially when you have a quarterback throwing 60 percent of his passes. I mean, he's throwing 11 touchdowns, three interceptions, not making many mistakes. Um, he uh, Hooker ain't no joke, so it'll be. In, we definitely have to have a spy on him at all times. But I feel like we have a better chance, which is weird for me saying. If they they in, they do end up running the ball more, uh, I think our pass game is just a little they just, too many big plays in the pass game. If you watch the NC State game last week, I mean they average over ten yards a catch. I mean it's just like come on, really? So it'll I, like I said, it's interesting. Like like we talked about earlier in the show when you guys rewatch it. You know, who is our identity? Are we a run stop, a pass stop? Are we, you know, a blitz package? Are we, a, 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 you know, do we confuse team? Like, who are we? And I just don't think we know that yet. So I feel like today's a, the biggest game, I think, for the rest of the year, setting a tone for uh, another big matchup against UNC to finish the year. But, um, you know, we'll see who we, who we are today. We'll see what Hooker decides to do, you know. Real quick. And Sam Brooks is his name. And guess what, baby Shaq? Five six nine. I knew that, but didn't say. It. I know it sounded like yeah, you know it after the fact, but I did know. Brain fart. Got it. All right, so here we go. I want to say this last thing from a defensive standpoint, and I've said this the week before. That is very important, and this is something I know we haven't done consistently and enough. And my question is: Has the new car smell worn off on this? And when I say new car smell, meaning the excitement and the newness of things. We haven't created enough turnovers slash takeaways this season. And in order for you to win a game like this with being a one-point favor or underdog, uh, pretty evenly matched, I guess, in essence, how you cheat that system 
is by creating turnovers. Takeaway slash turnover. I like the word takeaway. Turnover mean they gave you the ball. Takeaway mean we took the ball. We stripping it. We break on the ball for an interception. We knock the mess out of somebody. He fumbles it. Not a fumble snap or just an errant throw, anything like that. So that's why I always use the I like the word takeaway. I hate the word turnover. All right, I, I, it, it makes sense, but I get it. So my question is, uh, uh, Balin, is, or what I was saying about takeaways and turnovers is, when you start stealing possessions from an offense, that gives you more opportunities to score and less opportunities for them to score because you're killing the clock. Mm -hmm. Most football games have between college 13 to 14, 12 to 14 possessions in the entire game. Three simple turnovers, right? If we just say 12 is the number, that makes it 15 to nine. 15 possessions to nine possessions. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why those, that's why that stat is so important. So important. So we have to definitely harp on that. And one thing I haven't seen from our defense, we do a great job. You know, we get in the pile, but I don't see anybody cranking the lawnmower. I don't see nobody trying to strip that thing out. I don't see anybody trying to punch it out. I don't see anybody trying to do the extra things it takes to create those takeaways. And that's my biggest take from it right now. With five minutes out, I'm going to put this up here. I don't know. Live stream, Virginia Tech Hokies versus Miami Hurricane. Listen, man, I don't have no problem with y'all trying to plug on my stuff. Shoot, coach, a little uh, 99 cent plug. You know what I'm saying? So sure. I could pay bailing this money, man, before I had to do these predictions. And yeah, so we fair. get out of here. All right. So whoever live stream is, man, go to Pace Link, whatever. It might be, it might get you a virus. So be careful. You better cover yourself before you go up in there if you understand what I'm saying. All right. So, Balin, real quick, man. It's me and you, man. Mono e Mono. V12 ain't called in. I know my man, uh, uh, um, Actor Man Essex, he's gone. He's at he's doing a film festival today, man. I think he's getting an award for uh best scene for for uh most emotional tear uh ever come down a, a, a man's face today. I think that's what he's working on. So, real quick, man, talk to me, Baylor. What you got? So again, we're gonna talk about the over under 68.5 points today. I don't think it reaches there. I think both teams aren't consistently um, effective on offense. Uh, with the 11 players out today for Miami, that's a big uh, indication of, you know, especially the offensive line, the lack of depth there, it's gonna hurt us. But um, my score prediction is 38 to 27 Canes. 38, yep. 27. <laughs> oh! That's 11 points. That's 11 point spread right there. Well, I'm going to do like the price is right. I'm going to be at $1. $1. One, one <laughs> All right. I'm going. Hey, I need y'all to throw in your comment section. What's your prediction, man? Coach needs some help. Except <laughs> you feel you with this foolishness, man. Look at you, man. Hey, I'm, I'm four and one in prediction, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready. He balling right now. I'm going. I'm going 35-27. Wait, what? 35-27. Whoa. So a <laughs> difference of a field goal there. Okay, I see you. That's it. I mean, because you know what I look at? I'm, I, I'm being honest. I, it's funny when you said I started laughing because I already had in my mind, I was thinking 34-27. Yeah. I said, let me just make it a field goal. It is what it is. So therefore, it'll be, you know. Ooh, that's a good. This is Vegas right here. <laughs> Vegas, baby. All right. So Hayes got 35-27. Balin, you have 38, 27, 11 point difference. I have a eight point difference. So we're going to see what it is, man. All right. With all that being said, hey, make sure you check out them canes. As always, you know, it's go canes. Let me take this thing down from up here because I don't know what's going on with the, the thing. So, anyway, uh, we up out of here, man. We're going to make it happen. We're going to check out my man Solo D on the outro music. Get yourself some cane juice. And make it happen, man. Enjoy yourself. And we'll be back immediately, immediately after the game. All right? So we'll talk about it. Let you call on here and vent. I'll get all that fixed and everything else. All right? So with that being said, as always, go games.
We got some canes over here. Hey, there go uh, some canes over relax here. Relax and take notes while I step in. Ain't no question. I've been rapping. See my squad ballin', that's a blessing. I'm texting with my homies from that West End Zone crew. Say they taking shots, told me roll through. I told you about that orange and green. We click tight, big bites, we destroy your team. Make the world view our games like a horror scene. Stuff opponents in a can like Goya beans. I mean, representing for the team. Let us hit it out. You can't get connected with us, check your signal no. Infamous with that swag, it's original oh, The copycats could copy that, but we gon' get some more nah. No gay, nah. no Seminole nah. We let it stay, but in the state we is the general Salute. Cold gay was around the world, we don't have a limit nah. We read that you from the streets to the academics you, you. It's some canes over here you, you. It's some canes over here you, you. It's some canes over here Throwing you's up, how we do our thing over here Throwing you's up, how we do our thing over here Who we do please is the hurricanes You ain't got that work, you can't serve the canes I know you been watching, we been hurting things Where that crime at, homie, we them dirty canes We gon' get that title, what that purdy ring Gotta turn over chain for an early team Green and orange on my back, get a four on his back I'm scoring while you roaring like a lion getting silent Que pasó papi, tu no puedes conmigo Argentino de principio, huracán en mi equipo Got the passion like Sebastian when I'm rapping, that's a fact Get that 76 jersey for the legend, one sack, yeah You, you, get some canes over here You, you, get some canes over here You, you, get some canes over here Throwing you's up, how we do our thing over here You, you, get some canes over here You, you, get some canes over here You, you, get some canes over here Throwing you's up how we do our thing yeah, over here? We got some canes over here and we bought that. Solo D and the ballin' boys, yo, we got that. No good chillin' in the cut, hard rock pack. And if you hatin' on them canes, better stack. It's the state of the MIA. The U is back, what them haters gotta say. Them hurricanes, we be ballin' all day. Turn over chain, got the people yeah, going crazy. Yeah. Yo, whoop, whoop at the sign so you know who it is. They countin' find his ballin' like the U up in here. Gold teeth, grillin', chillin', solo. What it what is. Is. We got the turn up chain, gang, gang, gang up in here. Cause it's a UM thing, orange and green is the gear. We coming to you HD, so it's crispy clear. Now put them U's in the sky, don't stand and chill. And let them know if they don't know, we got some canes up in here. You, you, get some canes over here. You, you, get some canes over here. You, you, get some canes over here. Throwing U's up, how we do our thing over here. You, you, get some canes over here. Throwing you's up, how we do our thing over here. Canes, we be falling all day. Canes, we be falling all day. Canes, canes, we be falling all day. Canes, we be falling all day. Canes, we be falling all day. Who that? So low, so low, so low, deep. So low, so low, so low.